Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's episode features Sebastian Bourget, co-founder and COO of The Sandbox, a unique virtual world where players can build, own, and monetize their gaming experiences using Sand, the main utility token of the platform. Besides helping to realize the Sandbox vision, Sebastian is an active speaker and evangelist on the opportunity NFTs bring to gaming. Sebastian also became the president of the Blockchain Game Alliance in 2020, a nonprofit organization of 170 key members of the industry, and was recently named in the top 100 most influential people in crypto by Coin Telegraph. Sebastian, welcome to Edge of NFT. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. It's awesome. great to have you here. Great to have you, man. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll work on some introduction music next time. Uh, you know, maybe if you got a favorite tune or something. <laughs> man, there's um, something, there's some, something, some, I, something I, by maybe Snoop Dogg. I'm just foreshadowing yeah, something. There it is. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. We, we had Jim Jones on the show, so we got to have Snoop Snoop Dogg on the show at some point soon. Um, you know, I don't think there's a day in the last two months, Sebastian, that Sandbox has not come up in conversation between us and someone. Um, but for those that aren't familiar with all the amazing things that you're doing, um, it'd be great if you could just kick off with how this idea um, and team came about. And let's hear your Genesis story. Absolutely. Well, the Sandbox story is actually a long one. It started about 10 years ago, uh, originally as a mobile game on iOS and Android. We decided that we wanted to use new technology, back then smartphone and touchscreen, to enable anyone to become a creator a player to become creators and just by the touch of their finger to share any kind of uh, like pixelated world uh, playing around with physical elements uh, uh, some sort of like a mario maker and then sharing those creation online where um, other could play it it became quickly a large success with more than 40 million installed 70 million player made creation and users were literally spending hours, days to create amazing content. Yet that, that content that actually contributed to bring more downloads, more players, more revenue, and led to our company being acquired in 2018 by Animal Cab Brand. And yet we had no way to reward those creators for the contribution they brought in and making it a success. So there was this frustration that we had after being so successful with UGC and at the same time uh, not being able to, to reward creators fairly, giving them back for the value they have. I was back then still playing with technology and discovering blockchain, Bitcoin. And at the end of 2017, I actually saw, wow, there's a first, for the first time, there's a game that uses blockchain. Let's try it out. And I was a crypto kit. So I bought my first crypto kit by then. And Immediately, I, I saw the potential of like combining that technology, the NFT that allows those virtual cats to be stored in a wallet, can be transferred to any users and sold on marketplace like then OpenSea. Um, and instead of like having just developers and professional companies that make that, let's open it to everyone. Let's combine user-generated content and NFTs to empower creators let them own and monetize that creation. And so we started to work on from the ground up on a new version of Sandbox, this time 3D, multiplayer, multi-platform, using NFTs and Sand token at the center to give back value to those uh, players and creators. 
And that, that's essentially the genesis of like building this decentralized web-free gaming virtual world that uh, you see now as Sandbox. This is a great vision. And I think, you know, Jeff, Josh, and I, we all get excited um, about this idea of record of rewarding creators. We see the growth of the creator economy uh, being a, a huge part of, of the future as robots take our normal jobs and, and such. Um, and so it, it's really refreshing to hear that, you know, not everybody's going to be frustrated <laughs> that creators aren't getting uh, rewarded. You know, in fact, there's other uh, businesses out there we don't have to mention that don't don't necessarily care how much the the creators get rewarded. Um, so this is really beautiful. Can can you dive a little bit deeper into kind of the experience that people have with uh, the sand token and how people end up getting rewarded through through uh, engaging with the sandbox? Yes, like there's Sandbox is like this platform with multiple tools, creation tools, marketplace, map, so Vox Edit for the 3D editor, game maker, which is no code for making games. And even the player side now uh, with the alpha that we launched around end of November. So we touched down with many different audiences and communities. And what that means that it's, it's shaping to become that open metaverse that allows all sorts of audience to interact and to earn. And to earn, like I'm really talking about like new digital jobs, new revenue stream for people who contribute either as player or as creator into Sandbox. There's, I think like we're touching to both to the creator economy and the play to earn. We have already hundreds of artists making 3D assets, such as the one you're seeing behind me, that are like game items animated that can be used with the no-code game maker. We have dozens of like metaverse architect studios, virtual fashion designers, game designers, level designers, um, many more community managers, hosts, virtual show designers, people who are essentially creating all the content that's populating, uh, is going to populate the land and experiences. And I do believe like 99% of the metaverse will be user-made. So it's important to empower the creator and provide them the tools to do so. Um, and those are opportunities that are really offering like real revenue. We are talking like revenue that goes beyond uh, like the minimum wage in many countries, not just like third world countries, but like talking about the US, Canada, France, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, etc. cetera. Um, those creators who some of them, and I, I, I talk with them quite often, like they move from being just single individual, discovering sandbox and building for himself, sharing over social media, becoming popular. Now they became studios of hiring like 10, 20, 40 hours, the largest one is 80 people as of today. So that those are large companies, businesses now that can become profitable by servicing and creating experience um, for all our 17,000 landowners, IP brands and more. It's also enabling players now to earn since we introduced Alpha, there's been 5,000 alpha pass distributed either to landowner or to users who came and engaged with one of the four public hubs. And users, um, they participate into 18 experiences that get released and unveiled progressively until uh, December 20th. And if they complete a nine quest, simple quest, basically taking like five, 20, 30 minutes a day, they will be able to claim a thousand sand and free exclusive NFT. So effectively, we are creating engagement, we are creating fun, we are showcasing some of the possibilities of what it is concretely the metaverse for any user. We are rewarding engagement and um, that rewards are in the form of NFTs and sand token. Just to give you a rough idea, a thousand sand token is, is about $5,000 today. So it's more than, for many countries, more than one month's salary, sometimes your salary depending and i think it's it's a great example of like what will happen once 166 464 lands will be opening and 
anyone can launch its own play to earn season in Sandbox. There will be a huge scale um, network effect and there will be a great diversity for anyone entering with his avatar to choose from how they want to have fun, how they want to spend time, how they want to potentially earn a revenue from those activities and um, other experiences. Yeah, man, yeah, this is so cool. It's so exciting. So as a landowner, let's view it from, from that perspective for a moment. What are those opportunities? Like how, how are those opportunities going to evolve here over time? It seems like there is uh, some real potential there. And that's a great transition because that's the last opportunity I didn't really talk about. Like now, like lands is becoming like infrastructure. I think like people really understand well the concept of virtual real estate around the world. And land in Sandbox has become one of the most uh, highest ranked um, NFT collection over OpenSea. Over the past 10 days, we've generated more than $85 million of uh, GMV. Over a lifetime, more than $300 million of GMV. Um, it's easy to understand essentially owning a land you can either rent it to uh, someone else or you can use it build an experience and through that access monetization and why it's so exciting and potentially a great revenue generator is because like building into the metaverse building into the virtual world it's so much easier and faster than being building in the real world we're just talking about like I don't know, hours, days, maybe weeks at worst, to create content in the metaverse. And you're touching like a global audience. Like we have IPs from Korea, from US, from Europe, meaning like we have users from all around the world that can come and discover your land. Whereas in the physical world, location matters, of course, but you have to choose a town, you have to choose a country. You're limited on your impact. And it takes not just days or hours or, or weeks, it takes months, if not years, to start operating something. So with this magnitude acceleration of time, plus also not being bounded by any sort of like physical laws limitation, like really like the only limit becomes your imagination. You want to create light effect. You want to have flying creators. You want to make floating island or also all the cool stuff that just come out of someone imagination you can do that in the metaverse that makes also it fun entertaining and people want to discover those kind of things it's uh it's pretty cool i i've always wanted my own blimp so um, i'm gonna have to figure that out but i mean this is the web3 economy this is the convergence that we've all been talking about um it, it's just Amazing to hear what you're doing. I mean, you're you're literally changing the world. Uh, you're co-creating the future with with, and you're inviting everyone to the table. So um, I'm just so uh, excited about um, the the journey that that is ahead for Sandbox. And on that note, um, you know, I know you recently transitioned from your early testing and um, you know to the alpha launch, and uh, we're really excited to learn about sort of what these adventures are going to be like and, and uh, what this experience is going to be. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I think like everyone now is wondering what's the metaverse since Facebook started to rebrand itself as meta and just almost every day, everywhere people talk about the metaverse. To simplify, I would describe it just as a place a digital parallel universe or a virtual world or a myriad of virtual world actually where we're all going to be more socially connected and live more immersive experience some kind that we can not do into the physical world and we're going to do that not necessarily through vr or complex interface but just through 3d characters that represent ourselves our new digital identity to that virtual world we are we hope that we we're building this open metaverse where users are self-sovereign they own their identity through his avatar they own their currency they own their digital assets in the form of nfts and they can transfer those assets from one place to another they can reuse it uh, from one virtual world to another 
they can engage into things that are like more than game or socializing. These are just little, very little example of what's possible in the metaverse. They are going to see like virtual shows, virtual concerts, art galleries, museum, um, of course, games. Games is essential, but it's not the only thing you're going to see. And that's the great variety of experience that makes the metaverse exciting for many. Very cool. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it seems like sky's the limit, really, right? Uh, and um, it's really, everything is accelerating so quickly in terms of development and how these um, uh, worlds are forming over time. And we know it takes resources, though, to do that. I mean, we have time and knowledge, um, but also, uh, also, you know, money to help bring in talent and, and continue to work and explore these things. And so we know you've raised uh, $93 million recently. Congratulations. Big chunk of change, of course. How does that impact your roadmap and what we should expect from here? That's, so indeed, on November 2nd, we announced like raising our Series B round led by SoftBank Vision Fund 2 as well as uh, Liberty City Venture, Galaxy Interactive, Animoca Brands, Samsung Next, LG Tech Venture, and a few other strategic investors. And it took, I think, first of all, it's a great endorsement, validation of like strategic funds. Some of them have been supporting some of the most innovative company, company in the world and shaping technology, internet, and the way we're using and interacting with technology for the past 20 years endorsing the idea of like we need to build a web free decentralized metaverse not keep supporting those web two platforms now with these funds we're going to be able to hire more to keep building our platform improving our tools and let them creators really push their limit because of their imagination and build more experience we're going to be able to bring more ips and brands so metaverse is going to be a place which should be fun, should be like really like this almost like nonstop entertainment because you have great variety of artists, of virtual shows, of concert, of uh, like celebrities and thing that brings you closer to your favorite brand. Of and then after the less fun things, I would say like uh, server cost, uh, et cetera, and then obviously uh, continue to evangelize and through marketing action, bring more and more users towards web free NFTs and metaverse. And yeah, really exciting, man. All, all of that stuff coming together and, um, you know, some of the less, less sexy stuff that you mentioned, servers and infrastructure stuff. I mean, that, that's required to make this thing go. And I think a lot of people don't realize everything that goes into the back end of this thing, um, of, of projects of companies such as yours and others. Uh, we don't talk about a lot of it because it's, it's not as sexy as, uh, as talking about uh, Josh's uh, blimp that he's going to be getting. But, um, you know, it's still, it's so important. It's good, it's good to elevate that because um, it, it costs money and it requires talent and effort and, and knowledge and resources that, um, that uh, I think the public eye doesn't necessarily see very frequently. Yeah, and, and going back to that theme of, of creator economy, right? I mean... I think that's part of why we get so amped about tech and blockchain in general is because when you're investing in this domain, you're investing in creating the future. You know, what is the future going to be like? What is the metaverse going to be like? What is uh, a platform that allows creators to be creators look like? Um, and so that's really exciting too, that that's where these, these funds get applied um, and that, that as a society and that there's so many enthusiastic uh, investors out there to help participate in this. Um, you, you've also uh, partnered with some sort of influencers and and very special folks out there. Um, this first one, I'm not really familiar with Snoop Dogg, uh, but um, anyways, <laughs> I yeah, anyways, uh, <laughs> no, but you've got Hell's, Hell's Kitchen, The Walking Dead, Smurfs. I mean, it runs the gamut. 
Adidas is one of one of your major uh, partners. Um, how has all of this uh, brought forth a new wave of, of business opportunities? Can you expand upon that a little bit? It well, just like almost everything, it started pretty slow. It used to take us like about almost a year to convince the first brand to enter and like <laughs> believe the vision of like true ownership and letting the community have NFTs and use that as medium to bring them closer. One thing that Sandbox does very well is like we, all the NFTs in Sandbox have true utility. You can build your own game experience that combines all those NFTs from your favorite brand and you can publish it on the LAN and monetize it. We have uh, exciting features that are just accessible by anyone and like starting to launch your own NFT ticket to restrict potentially access only to the holder of that land and make it um, like more a space just for the holders of it and as a community that's also definitely very interesting. My now like the situation is very different like you said we have like Walking Dead, Snoop Dogg, Adidas announced entering Sandbox, uh, Steve Aoki was announced yesterday, and then we have all other family-friendly entertainment, Pororo, Care Bear, Smurf, etc. So it's going to keep accelerating like this and probably snowball by network effects. And more and more brands, more and more celebrities, they will feel like how it will be harder and harder for them not to have presence in the metaverse not to be able to engage with their community in a more meaningful manner something that to their true fans will uh, bring value to their true collectors or they will be uh, delivering so in a way I, like what we are seeing with uh, board ape for example like it's turning into like this special social statues with access to both online and physical world events. They're having, they're, they're doing a great job here at, at leveraging this community aspect. Um, and we are helping those brands to, to really think and define themselves. Like what does it mean we're entering a metaverse? Is it about user generated content? Is it about like making sure that the next generation and, and, and after they will, um, they will keep enjoying our brands uh, and in a new manner, like having the utility as like gamified item, equipment, new powers, uh, etc. cetera. And um, I'm, I think it's great to have that balance between user generated content on one side, a lot of creativity and brands on the other side, not just brands and make it purely commercial. We don't want it, the metaverse to become like a, a Times Square full of billboard. We want it to be like a place where culture will express itself uh, in so many different ways. That's not just focused on like commerce and transaction, but more focused on like community value and social relationship between you humans. You know, I'm really excited that you mentioned the Care Bears there. I'm, uh, I hadn't, I was not aware of that. And I'm imagining, you know, you've got somebody being mean in the metaverse and you could have a, a literal Care Bear stare you know? yes. <laughs> so, so, like a hidden <laughs> checkpoint or something like that that's right so um unfortunately i have to step away from this very engaging conversation to sort of co-create the future of edge of nft in another call but but i gotta ask um you know we were there in art basil let's call it nft basil because that's really what it was um and i know you announced that the big um partnership with snoop Give us like give our listeners a little glimpse into that relationship. Like, what was it like to sort of talk to Snoop about his involvement and in the sandbox, and and what was that launch experience like? Um, uh, you don't have to get into uh, exact specifics on what may or, or may not have been inhaled by by at least one of the parties in the room, but 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 what was it like working with Snoop and in, in what what's he excited about when it comes to collaborating? I think well, it's very exciting. Like what Snoop represents for many people, like he's this hip hop legend. Like a lot of people, a lot of uh, countries, he's global. He's known. He's representing success for many people, and, and he keeps pushing himself, reinventing himself, and that 
if you look at which are the top celebrities who are the most present into and, and involved into NFTs, owning NFT himself, launching new experience, various experience, AR, skateboard, the first concert into the metaverse, his avatar collection coming up in Sandbox, his land in Sandbox, etc. He and his team have been doing a fantastic job. They were, he was not the first, but definitely he catching up. And now I believe, based on a recent DAP Radar report, he's the one who are on the largest NFT connection and more. So he gets it. And he's always thinking like, how do I create something new and engaging for my fan? And one thing that came up when we brainstorm what we can do is like to bring his mansion, make it accessible to anyone or just the, and make his first concert accessible to the pass holders and create maybe the early access pass, which like if you own it, you will receive new drops, access to a different kind of perks, etc. He really gets community and um, he's willing to push, uh, like uh, to, to push the way like people will see him, etc. And that I think is great because it's inspiring more people now. Uh, and that there was a before and after Snoop entered NFTs in general. Like everyone who saw his first teaser was saying, "Wow, that's that's really cool the way he did it in Sandbox." People could project that. So yeah, we're going to have to start defining time now before Snoop in. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yes. I, I hope <laughs> in the same way like uh, Travis. Scott yeah. did like really push the concept <laughs> of okay, what should be virtual concert, and it helped push Fortnite. And everyone will always refer to that moment. Yeah. I hope that will be like okay, the Snoop moment. That well, that's that was then. Yeah, and I think you know, just like you know, back in the day, nobody had a website for their company, right? It, you know, it's not too long ago that that was the case. And, and it, it's crazy to think that somebody wouldn't have a web presence now, right? And the same is true of the metaverse, right? It's so obvious that that's coming. Uh, but so many people don't yet know that, that that is. That's the track that everybody in the world is on right now. Personal individuals, uh, companies, celebrities, brands, it's all coming and um, it's just amazing how early we really are in that awareness cycle at this stage. So interesting. You know, Sebastian, one of the other things that, that we always like to, to talk to folks about and we're really curious about is what other projects you look to or are seeing out there right now that inspire you? What are you getting excited about beyond the things in your immediate orbit? so many things like i've been always supporting for like building that ecosystem around blockchain gaming uh, that's why i decided to become the president of the blockchain game alliance the, every month when new members join i get i see the presentation of what they are building i see demo days where i can uh, where they are showing the real product as it is as they just built and it's great to see like how it's been evolving. Like guilds this year are definitely playing a larger part. Sub DAOs we are now talking about, like they are like creating smaller organization around specific games. The fact that so many games are now available and yet still early. So by next year, I'm sure like they will, will no longer talk about dozen or hundred of games, but thousand, ten of thousands uh, of game available. Um, how DeFi last year really took off and start to let us rethink the way that like we interact with token, we stake token, we create values uh, protocol to optimize yield around like values token holdings, while governance comes in place, how retro drops as well. I'm, I've seen like the DAP radar, I've seen the, the ENS one. I really enjoy that like, rewarding community even for past action past uh, engagement across product. I found that very powerful. Um, and of course, blockchain games. So, so like from everything, Axie Infinity, My Abra Alice, uh, Alien Worlds, Land, um, 
many more. It's pretty exciting already, the possibilities, and it's still very early on. So yeah, true to the nature of uh, crypto and blockchain, and uh, in particular, as we've seen in the realm of NFTs, uh, community, right, and collaboration and gaining inspiration from everybody in the space and supporting each other and lifting each other up. Uh, that's what's making this all so powerful, I think, now. And uh, it's, it's exciting to hear that from you. Yeah, I think I'm realizing too, we, we got to get in the blockchain game alliance. I think it'd be a great a great org to be a part of. I mean, we, we uh, don't have a game per se, but I feel like it's such, it's such a good fit with, uh, you know, the topics that we cover and the people that we talk with um, be a good fit. So well, you, you, you definitely don't need to be producing game, like the blockchain game Alliance, like regroups, like members from all corners of the industry, like investors, media, marketplaces, uh, developer solution, anyone who has an interest to facilitate the development, the discovery, uh, the interaction, the community management, and other aspects are, are very welcome. Uh, like this is part of that whole ecosystem. It's different from traditional gaming, and that's what we want to show. Well, yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to help uh, contribute and participate. That would be amazing. That's a great idea, Ethan.